if I were a betting man, I would assume that the OGL 1.1 is less about collecting royalties off of uh, publishers like Paizo and Critical Role and such, and really more just about discouraging the entire idea of an open source D&D system. Uh, they they want to chase everyone away. They want to be able to use it to legally bamboozle platforms into doing their dirty work for them and maybe saving them a few bucks with trying to put lawsuits uh, in motion over little tiny petty tiny creators and all that kind of stuff. They just want to force everyone to just uh, be chased away. Uh, they're 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 fine with uh, the controversy they've created. Uh, you know, like. It seems counterintuitive. You think this would be like the worst week ever and all that kind of stuff for a company to, to have, you know, like had something like this leak and have this amount of fan uproar. But uh, all the fans that are in an uproar about it are, are the fans they don't want. They don't want the people playing for free who want to play for free. They don't want people who want to stand up for themselves. They want the servile bootlickers who will continue to use D&D &D Beyond and support one D&D &D when it comes out and, and pay to play for, for their character generator apps and, you know, uh, customizable, downloadable magical battle axes and all the other fun and neat, great, wonderful things that, uh, that Wizards of the Coast has in store. Uh, those are the people they want to keep, and they, they, they are... Hoping that enough people who have signed up and are been paying for D and D Beyond stuff that they will have be monetarily invested enough that they will stick through it, and then they will still have a core of fans that they can show off to all these imaginary new fans that they think they're going to sweep in when Honor Amongst Thieves come out. Have uh, you noticed on Amazon yet all the recommendations of pre-orders for Honor Amongst Thieves uh, materials? They got junior adult, young adult novelizations of the movie. They got prequel comic books and graphic novels. And, and oh god, we're getting these little stupid toys that turn from twenty-sided dice into beholders, and shit like that. Because that's really what makes Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons. It's the presence of things like beholders and mind flayers. It's not anything else. Um, they they want to intimidate people uh, away from just using their system entirely. They 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 want people uh, uh, to be scared enough to to not uh, push. Uh, how far they can they can they can take things with the whole fact that you're technically not supposed to be able to copyright any of this stuff, and uh, in terms of the creatures, the th you know the the foes and things that players interact with or play as, like all the essential ones are public domain. You can't copyright elves, you can't copyright dwarves, you can't copyright goblins, you can't copyright orcs. Those are always going to be free in public domain. Uh, it doesn't take much to make a version of the of the d20 rules that are adjusted differently enough that you know you can say this is not a direct derivative of an existing version of D&D &D, and you sh probably shouldn't need the OGL but uh considering that this is the attitude they're taking towards people who've been trying to comply and people who would still potentially be willing to comply uh I, I don't really know how trustworthy the idea of trying to just uh, float yourself out there and still put these things out without the protection of the license. Uh, obviously, this is all speculation. Like, I, I think it's cute how many of the gaming YouTubers are trying really hard to put on their due diligence hat, and, you know, and be, like, careful about, you know, making sure they're making factual statements and stuff. It's touching, but we are allowed to speculate, aren't we? Uh, I mean, our, maybe we're not. You know, some of the stuff that's in this uh, OGL apparently are like really vague things and just all sorts of stuff. In a way, it's more about all the things that aren't books. Uh, it just just says videos. It doesn't go into detail about what kind of videos, at least not that I've heard so far from the people who've seen it. Uh, it's just in a, like a list of various things. Just D&D &D videos. Uh, so does it mean you're not supposed to be able to live stream Unless you're, like, doing it through an approved source so they can monetize it? Are you not allowed to, uh, you know, to talk about game mastering tips? Are you not supposed to, uh, you know, give player tips on how to build a, a good fighter build? Are you not uh, supposed to be allowed to talk? Are we all going to get copyright struck a year from now 
because of all these videos we're making just talking about the OGL, because we're making D&D &D content. What? Someone might make five cents of ad revenue talking about Dungeons and Dragons. That should be ours. Also, coincidentally, you know, if it just happens to drive all the negativity about our brand off the internet, oops. Um, hopefully this is a moment where people realize they've seen the mask slip. I'm not sure if Wizards of the Coast could walk this back right now, even if they wanted to. And uh, it's it's uh, it's kind of like the uh, Century 16 uh, incident where, you know, like the, for the business to recover, they have to like wait out about four or five years for a whole batch of high school kids to completely cycle through school and graduate, and move on, and then a new batch of kids to come in. It, but basically the same kind of timetable is what d and is going to look at if they want to be able to turn this around and like... Uh, rebuild an audience after something like this don't be a servile bootlicking simp for this company there's plenty of other role-playing games to play uh, uh pick one try a couple different ones out don't don't just wed yourself to this one thing uh it's it's partly because everyone's become so attached to D, &D is is why this is able to be a problem in a way the ogl has been its own worst enemy because it's the OGL that has made D&D &D so much the, 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 the strong center of gravity for the entire role-playing game industry uh, pretty much since its inception, it seems. And uh, in, in, a, in a fucked up way, uh, Wizards of the Coast destroying it like this uh, is, is actually in the long term going to be good for everyone. But in the moment, it's harsh and we've seen them for what they are. So d don't, don't give in. Find other games to play. I just happen to have some. But you know what? I won't mention where to get them or what they might be in this video. Go go play Cyberpunk. Go play Star Trek Adventures. Go play Palladium. Go play something by Pinnacle. Go play some of the OSRs. Grab your copies now before they have to be taken off print and they're forced legally to destroy their inventory. <laughs> uh you you know what's going on. I, I if I'm the very first video you've watched on this subject, my apologies. But uh, I figure we're all gamers here. Uh, you know, something I was saying to my wife earlier. The thing, the thing, the sad thing about role playing games is that in some ways they're kind of a a, a distraction for intelligent minds. Uh, like I'm, you know, as much as time as I've spent as an adult thinking about and worrying about and dicking around with role playing game stuff, I know there's people out there who, who've dove way further into that deep end than I have and and for longer way you know older than me at this point folks and uh there you know the, it takes intelligence to get into these things and be a dungeon master in particular not just a, like a passive player uh but you know at times you gotta stop and wonder you know like you know what what could have been accomplished if so-and-so had you know, uh, spent more time working, you know, but trying to figure out how to be an architect or an engineer or something instead of, you know, worrying about how many dice, uh, you know, a, a random elf encounter the woods might have for hit points, you know, like, but now this whole crowd, all those people who have great intelligence, but have been kind of distracted into a fantasy world by it for years. Well, they're now thinking long and hard uh, about, uh, what Wizards of the Coast just did. Uh, it, they've taken a right away from everybody. Even people who who d don't write OSR stuff or don't write OGL stuff. Uh, just knowing that you have the option to try it one day if you wanted to is a thing. And now you don't even have that option in your life. It's Even if you haven't used it or had no direct conscious intention of using it, it's still been taken from you. So casually, just so they can maybe make a few bucks on a... Just a mind-blowingly, you know, like, uh, ill-considered plan into the first place. Uh, we already have MMORPGs. Uh, we already have free-to-play games that charge you at the ass. Uh, we're perfectly capable of playing those already if we want. Role-playing games are their own thing. Problem with role-playing games is that uh, you, you gotta live within your means. Or you gotta learn how to sell merchandise to your players better. Like, there's nothing wrong with selling merchandise to players and stuff, but you can't, you can't be doing this to everybody. Uh, not, not after they've spent so many decades now with the OGL the way it was. 
uh, and, and everyone, you know, it, this isn't a passive entertainment. This isn't like watching a Star Wars movie. D&D literally does not function or exist without the Dungeon Masters and players to actually get together and make it happen. Uh, D&D is not Star Trek. D&D is not Harry Potter. D&D is not one of those kind of passive entertainment kind of things. Everyone is a part of D&D who is in the hobby, who plays the game. We, uh, we, we are active participants. We are not just the audience watching the movie. We are the crew and writers and actors making the movie. Uh, and this company just really doesn't understand what they own. I guess that's really what it comes down to. But, you know, they'll see soon. We shall see. This might be enough of a galvanizing event. I certainly can't think of anything that comes even remotely close to this. You know, I heard someone say that apparently you can't even, like, cosplay as an IP D&D character on TikTok if it means you might make money on it, which, not being into TikTok, I still don't get exactly how you're able to justifiably make cash posting little short videos like that, but YouTube seems to think you can do it too, so... Whatever. Anyway, those are just some of my random thoughts in the middle of the night about all this. Uh, hit buttons, find me on places, and purchase things, or purchase things from other people. I myself am an old Riffs fan, so I'd say go on palladiumbooks.com and order yourself a Riffs book. I mean, period, you know, I didn't like D&D when I was younger. Uh, okay, I came up in the 90s, you know, I, I got started playing on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Other Strangeness, and then quickly, like, moved on into Rifts from there, played a lot of GURPS, uh, Call of Cthulhu, a ton of White Wolf, uh, got most of my early experience running games, running, you know, World of Darkness games, uh, and then I quit role-playing games for, like, seven or eight years, and then came back after 4th edition came out. So in many ways, like the OGL has always been a little kind of alien to me because it happened to have come out right when I was away from the scene. And I only really got into D&D 5th edition because people wanted to play it. I, you know, I could go on meetup.com and put out an ad saying I'm looking for Rifts players. And by the time I would get enough people to say, yes, they'd like to play, by the time that third person would say, hey, I'd like to, the first two people have waited so long they don't want to play anymore. Their schedules have changed and stuff, and so their availability is going to be shot and all that kind of stuff, yada, yada, yada. You put out an ad saying you want to play some dorky adventure module for D&D, and suddenly everyone's showing up at your door with their character sheets in hand, and so you go to where the action is if you want to enjoy your hobby. Uh, and so, for my interest, I would like to see a return of the 90s when D&D was not the top dog. You know, they might, you know, kind of in a grandfathered way had the most total bulk sales, but they did not own the zeitgeist during that time. And the 90s was the age of, you know, yeah, Riffs and White Wolf more than anything else from my point of view. And it'd be nice to see a, a slight return to that. Cyberpunk's got a toehold on making that climb, and a few other games do too. Uh, and hopefully, you know, the, this one D&D shit is not successful so that these other role-playing game companies don't end up turning around and creating their own OGL licenses so they can control their virtual tabletop and sell you special skins to play Star Trek Adventures, which is legally distinct from the Star Trek Online game that they already have. This is so redundant. We don't need this. It's supposed to be an in-person activity. The pandemic and critical role, you know, I know there's a place for people to have the access to online role-playing games and more power to them, but the, the, we've way over-embraced them as a thing. And that's also a, a part of what has led us up to this because it's, it's, it, it's given not only incoming players false expectations, it's given the people at the top who own this stuff, false expectations of what they think they can do with this. And uh, it's up to us to show them that they're wrong. The thing is, is do we have what it takes, or are we all just a bunch of spineless nerds like the jocks who made fun of us back in the day always said we were? I guess only time will tell. And until then, stay waspinated.